Hello, my name is Paul Massey. I'm a founder director here at Blue Fruit Software. Today I'm going to be talking about test driven development. I'm going to start by just explaining a little bit about what is unit testing. So when we test software, let's say for example we're testing the software for an incubator which might have temperature sensors, a heater, some kind of controller and a display. We could do system level testing which is checking that the whole system works together so in this case it would be maintaining the temperature effectively of the incubator but we would also want to test individual components such as that the software for the sensor is reading the temperatures correctly and the heater is being controlled effectively and we call that unit testing. System testing can be done usually like a user pressing buttons and, and checking things work properly whereas unit testing requires us to write some code around the individual components so that we can exercise them both sunny day and rainy day scenarios and the both have benefits so system testing makes sure the whole system hangs together effectively unit testing allows us just to check individual components and just push the boundaries a little bit around how they should work so what is test driven development well test driven development or TDD is a methodology to help us write our unit tests. We have some choices when we're writing our unit tests about whether we write them before or after our target code. We call that test first or test last. Test driven development or TDD is a test first approach to writing unit tests. So for example, if we're writing unit tests for a temperature sensor under test driven development, we would write a test to say, for this given voltage, we expect to get this temperature out in degrees centigrade. We would then write the code which did that calculation, and then we might refactor. So we call this pattern red, green, refactor. Red is our failing unit test, and then we write the target code to make it pass, and then we refactor. So what is the difference between doing test first versus test last? Well, they've done research into this to compare the two and they found one of them is 50% more effective than the other. So how did they measure this? Well, they use a technique called mutation scoring. This involves artificially injecting bugs into the code and then measuring what percentage of those bugs the unit tests actually catch. And what they found is that the test first approach caught 50% more bugs than the test last approach. So this one thing could make your unit test 50% more effective. Furthermore, what they found is far less variance between different engineers when they took the test first approach. So this means that the test last approach really is very dependent on you having super experienced devs on your team. Whereas test first means you can have a wider range of experience on your team and still get really effective unit tests. So why is test first a more effective way of writing unit tests? Well, one reason is it forces you to architect for testability. For example, if you are writing unit tests first, you will think about what your interface looks like and how testable that interface will be. It may force us to include dependency injection, for example, or provide interfaces for us to test we've got the right outcomes from a class. Whereas when we write test last, sometimes we don't think about those things till it's too late and we come to write the unit tests and we don't have interfaces to test what we want. This results in us either cutting corners or writing poorly architected code. So test first results in more effective unit tests and it's the actual process is more efficient as we go. So there's another reason why test first is much more beneficial than test last. And this is because it forces engineers to articulate their intent before they write the code. They've done these studies where they've put brain sensors on developers and they've seen by expressing their intent, that they're activating much more of their brain and thinking much more clearly about the problem. So for example, if we were writing some code for doing temperature sensor calibration, the test first approach would mean we wouldn't think about what the implementation was gonna be. So we would just say our intent here is to convert a voltage into a temperature reading in degree C um, with 1% accuracy. And we'd write a unit test that looked like that. If we took the test last approach, we'd have probably thought up a solution, which might be a linear calibration or a spline or a polynomial or something. And then we'd write a unit test to check that those calculations were correct. By taking the test first approach, it gives us a whole bunch of benefits. So one reason expressing intent in our unit tests is good is it makes it much easier to do refactoring. Refactoring is where we've written the code 
but we can see ways of making that code better, either more readable, more maintainable, or maybe more optimal. We describe those problems as technical debt. A great analogy to help understand technical debt is if you think about washing up in a commercial kitchen. You can get away without doing washing up um, and you can start cooking some meals and you'll get a bit behind on the washing up, but it won't have any impact. But the more behind you get on it, then you start getting to a stage where getting meals out get delayed, some meals become impossible, pans get baked on and, uh, and you can't use them anymore. Whereas if you stay on top of the washing up as you go, you avoid all of these problems. So imagine your code base as a kitchen where the technical debt is bad, it looks like a student kitchen, where technical debt is good and you're staying on top of it, it's a nice pristine commercial kitchen. By expressing our intent in our unit tests, it makes it very easy to refactor as we go and stay on top of that washing up. So another reason why it's great to express your intent in a unit test is because it can actually help with your documentation. So when Bluefruit first started getting involved in medical devices, we were really surprised to discover that the medical sector generally was still following a test last approach to unit testing. And we helped many of our customers start taking the test first approach. What this enabled them to do was use these unit tests and these unit test titles as part of the living documentation. This was great because it meant they got free technical documentation that was guaranteed to be up to date with the latest version of code. So have you ever found that you're really dependent on individuals or specialists within your team and they become a bottleneck on your planning? Expressing intent in your unit tests means that we can have group ownership amongst the team. This makes it much easier for developers to pick up code from each other, thus removing these bottlenecks. So a really common question I get asked at Bluefruit is how do we get such great buy-in across all our engineers, across all our projects for doing TDD? The answer to this is we use TDD as a primary selection process when we're hiring, whether that's junior devs or senior devs. Rather than looking at CVs first, we set a TDD aptitude test. This is great for inclusion too, because it's a blind approach to hiring. It's also a great way of ensuring that all our team prefer to take a test first approach and express their intent before they write their code. So why do we put so much weight on this one practice at Bluefruit? Well, we think TDD and test first in agile project management, it's really important that everybody is good at expressing intent. Expressing intent is really important when you don't have a big design that you're working to. You're very dependent on everybody articulating what they're intending to do so you can ensure that everyone's on the same page. Also, expressing intent is really good for psychological safety. Psychological safety is all about making sure everyone feels safe to contribute throughout the whole project. And psychological safety is the most important value when it comes to getting the best possible quality engineering throughout your project. When you have an environment where people are expressing their intent all the time, that makes sure all team members feel safe to contribute all the time. As well as using TDD as a selection process, we also use TDD as part of our regular training program. We use a tool called Cyber Dojo, and what this does is it allows the team to come together and do a training exercise. They take an exercise such as converting Roman numerals into numbers, and the team get together, they break out into pairs, and they come up with a solution to that problem using TDD, using unit tests. And they come together again and review together, and then keep repeating. What this does is it results in the team converging on best practice. This works much better than some lead engineer writing some kind of coding standard and then trying to police it. Instead, you're using the whole team's knowledge to converge on the best way of coding and writing unit tests. Are you wasting time and money writing unit tests that aren't really adding any value? When we got involved in medical devices, we were really surprised to find that many teams were writing their unit tests last rather than test first. This would be ticking the boxes around compliance, but those unit tests aren't really adding the value that they should. We'd really recommend that you get your team to consider using a test first approach to writing their unit tests. In summary, 
Taking a test first approach to your unit testing is going to result in better unit tests, better architecture, better testability, better documentation, and a better team culture. So if you want to avoid wasting time and money on your unit tests, please reach out to Bluefruit. We can help you by either providing consultancy, training, or even providing an engineering team to boost the productivity on your project.